Okay, moving along, let's take a look at Module 2. And this is where we really start to get into more meat of the material. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about information security governance and what its impact is on the organization. So if we look at this particular diagram, and this comes to us from ISACA. They're the organization that put out frameworks like COBIT and COSO. Uh, you may be familiar with the CISM or CISA exam. Those all come from ISACA. And this particular particular diagram really shows the business processes. Uh, and if you look at the main processes, we have the organization as a whole, and from that stemming down to uh, the processes within our organization, the people, and technology. And then I like to think of, of the elements as, uh, you know, really on kind of like bungee cords between each of the major processes. Um, you've got culture and governance and architecture. And the reason I say kind of think of them as bungee cords or ele um, elastic bands is because if you pull one out of perspective, it affects the rest of the organization as a whole, right? So if the architecture, for instance, doesn't really support what we're trying to do as an organization, well, that throws everything off base. Or if governance isn't there, company culture isn't there. So ultimately, in this diagram, what we really see are the four main elements, organization, our processes, our technology, and our people. And at the base of that triad, our processes are driven by our technology and the capabilities of our people. And you notice the, the band connecting people and technology, human factors, and that really being the base of the triangle, and that ultimately is the weakest point here within our organization. You know, if you were to ask um, most people where the weakness in my organization is, hopefully today we understand that it comes from the inside. And absolutely, bad guys, there are many bad guys outside, many issues with connectivity to public networks such as the internet, absolutely. But if you look at uh, historical information, about 80% of all fraud is initiated inside. Not to mention the fact that um, security vulnerabilities don't even have to be the result of a malicious attack. You know, a user accidentally deleting a critical file, that file's gone whether it was intentional or not. Or uh, someone in the organization giving out sensitive information to an attacker. They didn't mean to, but they violated policy and uh, allowed an attacker to have a leg up and have some internal knowledge. So these human factors are very, very significant. But if you start at the top, the organization as a whole, this is really where governance starts. That piece where senior management is, uh, is involved, they determine the organizational strategy, how the organization is to be designed, and what our you know, ultimate approach to security is. Now, from senior management, you know, you see down in the center, governance, absolutely. And they have to govern in such a way that supports their strategy. So ultimately, the strategy is what we want to accomplish, but the governance will help us get there. That's where our policies and procedures come into play. You'll also no notice company culture, and company culture is huge. How my organization behaves, what our, our, our climate, you know, whether it's politically speaking or what our approach and our general environment is, that's huge in the realm of security. For those of you that work in the government or military, you know that you have a very unique culture. Uh, if you're in the private sector in a commercial industry uh, that provides medical services, well, your culture is driven, uh, perhaps based on a need to maintain compliance with HIPAA, or um, you know, it could be more subjective. Organization, the upper senior management, they really drive the culture of the organization. If senior management doesn't believe in information security or security as a whole, then you'll find your users don't believe in it either. So culture stems down. Architecture also, that's the environment we've created with our devices, that's the framework on which we've built our organization and the elements that we've implemented. All right, now, People, processes, technology. When we talk about the link between people and processes, emergence, new things happening all the time. New technologies are coming out, new processes are in place, and how we enable and support those new processes 
will determine whether or not they're successful. So I, I think this is actually a very good diagram that ISACA gives us because it really helps us kind of see um, the business model and the business as a whole and how security is affected by so many different elements and um, interrelated bands, if you will. So good diagram from ISACA.